you ever thought about how cool it would be to live on the moon? Having fun in low gravity, an amazing view of the stars and Earth. Sounds like a pretty amazing vacation. But living on the moon is very complicated. One of the first things that would need to happen is building a safe place to live, and that involves digging. Why not send up construction equipment from Earth? Well, the machines used on Earth are way too big and heavy to send up in a rocket. Digging on the Earth and digging on the moon are two incredibly different tasks. The moon is a vast desert of dust, several inches thick. This moon dust is called lunar regolith because it's technically not soil. Soil is defined by having organic content. That means it's made up of something that was once alive, like ants, worms, insects, or plants. But the moon has no organic life. As far as we currently know, nothing lives there. This lunar dust is an extremely abrasive substance. That means it's really rough, not soft like lint. It's got glassy, sharp, jagged edges that can scratch helmets and camera lenses. It also sticks to everything and can damage equipment. When Apollo 11 first went to the moon, the clingy dust made their white suits gray. It got on their skin, in their eyes, and up their noses when they removed their spacesuits. Its clinginess is from static electricity, the same stuff that makes your socks stick to your shirt in the dryer. This clinginess is very problematic for machines. It jams mechanical joints and coats radiators on rovers, causing their batteries to overheat. Regolith also makes the moon's surface slippery. The first astronauts to visit had to learn how to carefully plan their steps to avoid slipping. So digging and building on the moon is definitely a difficult task. With such a challenge, NASA made an inspired decision. The Regolith Challenge is the first time NASA has seriously considered input from the public on how to build a better lunar digger. You know what else about this competition is really amazing? The winning prizes add up to $750,000. The challenge was designed by NASA and co-hosted by CSA, Cal Poly, and CSEWI. The event was conducted under the NASA Centennial Challenges Program and took place at the Cal Poly San Luis Obispo campus. The competition was open to all U.S. citizens and the teams consisted of students, entrepreneurs, engineers, and small research and development labs from various companies, organizations, and schools. A total of 25 teams were registered. Seven judges from NASA, CSEWI, and aerospace and academic professionals will review the performance of each moving excavator. So how do you win? The main determining factor in who wins the competition is the amount of regolith that is excavated by a robot, the weight. And the weight is set at 150 kilograms. So in 30 minutes time, they've got to dig up and drop into the box 150 kilograms worth of regolith. They're required to operate on very little power. Uh, they're required to be less than 70 kilograms in their total mass, so they have to be very lightweight. While using an average power of 150 watts during that time. Wow, that's less power than a color TV. That's even less power than an Xbox or a PlayStation uses. The competition also had to recreate the lunar surface environment. The moon's fine, dusty, and abrasive surface can really interfere with mechanics and electric operations of a machine. It's the type of surface that can make even the best of machines malfunction. The material used to imitate the moon's surface is an odorless, powdery gray, sand-like material made of crushed volcanic rock called basalt. This 1.2 square meter sandbox holds the largest quantity of moon simulant in one test facility, approximately seven metric tons. That's quite a lot of lunar dust to have in one place. We wanted to open it up and uh, allow the public to participate, and uh, you never know what kind of great ideas you might get. So these are the kind of programs that really uh, enhances the image of engineering and shows the public, uh, uh, and, or gets the public involved in uh, promoting uh, engineering education and innovation. So in that respect, it's very effective. All the competitors were really creative and showed scientific innovation in engineering and technology. NASA hopes that events like this will lead to the development of new and more effective technologies to dig and evacuate lunar regolith. Being able to remove regolith is very important to the nation's space exploration operations. This research is so important because the first astronauts to land on the moon in 1969 were there for a very short time, kind of like sightseeing. NASA plans to make a trip back to the moon in the near future and start construction on a lunar outpost. So I guess you could say the next time NASA visits the moon, it's going to be an extended stay. So the next step, hmm, living on the moon. I've got my bags packed. That's not a trip I'm gonna miss.